and a guy like you should live a woman it's dangerous i'm loving it <laughs> welcome to the podcast <laughs> life i think we're doing kind of like a life update today right Is it, or something or i think you know we're just geeking on what's going on right now let's just say what's going on right now oh wait hold on and for the first time ever we have a studio audience no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> oh we gotta do our intro we yeah, are yeah, our intro we are two geeky ladies geeking about issues in our lives, relationship gossip, and occasional politics, all while geeking and having fun. Let's geek! <laughs> so, what is going on right now? Oh, nothing. It's been so eventful for 2020. I know. I feel like October has been super eventful. Like, legit a lot of things were happening and mostly one of my favorite like event that happened this year or at least for the month of uh october is i saw bts online live and hey do you remember that yeah you i enjoyed it, it was oh really nice. did you see all the snaps i sent you yes i did oh i enjoyed Let's it try to figure out who that little boy is though is that somebody's oh, secret my son God. is it a secret son Nah, man, I don't think so. Like, okay, did I tell you this? Like, the first thing I saw, okay, after day one and day two of the concert was done, you know, usually me going on TikTok, like always, because you're going to see my ass there, is um, I saw somebody posting, is like, is that RM's secret child? And like, they're just dropping hints. You know what I mean? They're just they're just slowly showing us, you know, like first it was taking the ring off the ring finger. And then, you know, he posts a picture with this little girl. And now like we see a little boy and I was just like, oh my God, all these speculations. <laughs> hey. Yeah. But I will say my favorite highlight, oh my God, because there was so many good moments of that concert my highlight you know everyone did a good job like i loved every single member especially suga like i loved his solo performance and um it's jimin he freaking impressed me the essence of michael jackson was in there like i'm sorry but jimin is your favorite isn't it no no it's suga why do i always forget that because you want to know why because you always talk about jimin it's like every you know what you are actually no this is not what you are you remind me of that chick that's got a man but you admire the other dude you're like that one that goes if i wasn't with my man just know i'd be all over you but i'm faithful but i do look from time to time you know that's that vibe you give me when you talk about jimin so that's why i forget (laughs) you're a sugar fan Yeah. yeah okay 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 so here's the thing there's a thing i keep saying about these boys specifically which is Okay, even though I have my bias, Suga, first off, yes, I wasn't loyal. I will tell you that right now. I was with RM for the beginning of the few years of of their career. It's like, I'm telling you my history from when I flip-flops, you know, like a child. Oh, oh, all of these. I flip-flop, oh my God, my heart, my heart. Okay, so here's the thing. So I was with RM, we had a little falling off, right? And uh, it's okay. And then uh, Suga kind of like, you know, mend the pieces of my heart a little bit. And so I'm like riding with him. However, the OT7 is real. Like, you know, I, okay, I admire all of the members, but I swear every time they're either performing, they drop a song, they drop a, a music video, whatever it is, you just can't help but just to look. I know I shouldn't, but you just look. You know, you just look. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't be loyal. Like, it's so hard to be loyal. You're just like, you know, you just love all of them. So, but what I was going to get at was that his solo performance in uh, Black Swan, you saw, uh, I know I sent you the clip. Oh my God. Yeah, I enjoyed it very much. Oh, so good. So graceful. But Jimin, oh my God his solo performance on both days, he killed it. And then he goes ahead and seduces millions of girls out there. 
and boys mm. with like you know with his gym and effect he was so seductive in his dance moves did did you see it i know you had to uh have seen it because i posted on our mm-hmm. happy birthday gym and so happy birthday that was back in uh october 13th so and um oh wait I didn't realize this, but also Cardi B had a birthday too, a day before yes. uh, Jimin's birthday. And I was just like, oh, I didn't know Cardi was a Libra. Yes, so yeah, Cardi B is a Libra. And, you know, I was a bit disappointed because, you know, I was rooting for her when she announced that she was going to divorce Offset. But, you know, just as you try to get out, they pull you back in. So now she's going to work it out again with her husband. And that's her business. She ain't got to explain that to nobody. No, but, um, you know, I would, you know, coming so hard because I totally understand how the fans, especially the females is like, oh, don't go to him. Like he's, he's trash. He's a piece of shit. Of course. Yeah. Cause he, he, he ain't loyal. Like freaking so like, what, what was it? He went live or something like that. And he hid, uh, the phone. You know what? Yeah. Like, you you know what video I'm talking about, right? Yeah, and I, I know exactly like, what you're talking about. While he was playing video games. Yeah, and I was just mm-hmm. like, "Wow, you really had to hide your phone, like for real." So I was like, "Damn!" But the thing is, I don't know. You know, we don't know to what extent her relationship is with him. But from personal experience, it is when you love someone, you love someone. You know. Yeah, I'm not saying that's going on with her. I don't know her story, but I just wish her the best of luck. And Cardi, you know, she got it. She got it. Like she did that. Mm-hmm. One. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a good marketing pitch. I'm, um, you know, for the whole divorce thing. I mean, mm-hmm. she quietly made that music video with Megan Thee Stallion. Then she dropped it, bragging about her cooch, saying, you know, I'm that chick. And then afterwards, a few days later, she said, I'm divorcing my husband. Bye, bitch. I don't know who was the marketing team behind it, whether it was her idea, whoever, somebody needs to raise. It was genius to me. But now I'm just like, oh, that's a waste because you you decided to work it back out. So congrats, I guess. However, talking about the music video, though, um, do you remember a few episodes ago, I was talking about how, like, Remember you were getting me to do that kind of, but like the guessing game on like, uh, don't worry about it. It's nobody important in the music video. And I was just like, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Right? I was just like, who yeah. Is it? I could have swore Nicki Minaj was the surprise guest. A lot of people. Did. It would have been awesome. Yeah. And now I think you were the one who told me what just yesterday or something like that. Oh, yeah, that there's a you know rumor that there's going to be a collaboration with Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. And even though you know I have my own thoughts on Nicki Minaj, I am all for it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if they can make up and be women and be mature about it, then why not? You know, I mean, if a big bitch be for me, we're gonna be forever. I mean, I agree with Cardi when she said that on Love and Hip Hop, but you know, if somebody wants to be mature and say you know screw this let's be friends why not so yes and you know know, for a while i've been waiting for that collab though like since the beginning of cardi like when she did um oh gosh what's that song bodak yellow yeah like i thought from somewhere around there like way before i think the beef even started like i it would have been so dope if they did a collab uh together i think i'm pretty sure i'm not the only one who thinks this way where like well they did do a um, collab together they did motorsport which one um cardi b and nikki have done a collab together they um, They and yeah, the collab is what created their beef <laughs> originally. Oh, yeah, it was called Motorsport because it was with Migos. It was a Migos song called Motorsport featuring Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Okay. So yeah, it's really good. Like, you know, when you take, when you have time, like look at the music video, but they oh, were featuring because allegedly the, the verse that Nicki Minaj had sang in the music video was different from what they recorded. Mm -hmm. And it was implied that Nicki was dissing Cardi B in their own music video. Uh, And Cardi B felt a type of way and she went on the internet and she had receipts proving that there were two different verses. 
So, you know, that's kind of where the origin of the beef started because Cardi was all like, I thought we were cool. How, why are you right, making, course, you know, doing yeah. shady stuff? So, you know, if they can be friends again and just, you know, chill, then that's fine. You know, stop being a hater, Nikki. Just have your baby and relax. Congrats on your baby, I guess. Yeah, congratulations. Too. She just had her baby too, right? Yeah, she had a boy. Wait, could we talk about, um, oh God, what's his name? The guy who shot uh, Megan Stallion. Tory Lanez and Megan Stallion. Yes, the fact that Tory Lanez has been finally been indicted. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And the fact is, the only reason why I knew this is that the other, just the other day, because I was on YouTube, um, I saw Wendy Williams talking about it. And she said something quite interesting to me because um i didn't know like what last week or something like that he was going on a campaign like showing off his kid getting like sympathy points and i'm sorry like no that 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 didn't fly with me that didn't fly with anybody and i yeah and i have to agree with uh wendy williams where it's like no man don't put your kids there because you were a grown ass adult. I mean, at this point, it's like me putting my own words into what she was saying, but like, you shouldn't be putting your kids in the situation because first off, like you're a grown ass man, you did what you did and it was mm-hmm. up. Like it was mm-hmm. up. You shot her in both her two feet. Talking about, I was drunk. How drunk are you where you could shoot the person in there? Like, are you kidding me right now? Like, dude. And then this is the thing you were quiet this whole damn time and you would, one would think that you're quiet because you're trying to get your lawyers and everything Mm -hmm. in check, your orders, what to say with your publicist. No, instead you put a campaign out there and then to add insult to injury, you release a 17 song album, basically mocking the whole entire situation. It was complete fuckery in my own opinion. It was, it was, of course it was. It's like, this is what you came up with? Really? That is what it is. Yeah. But I'm I'm just, I'm happy. And then um, one thing I don't have to agree with what Wendy Williams said is that, okay, he could be facing, what did they say? He could be facing like 22 years or something like that in prison. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, I think it's too much. I'm like, no. No, it's no, not. It's not. No, it's not. He ain't going to jail. I'm just like, please go back to Canada. Like, just take your leprechaun ass back to Canada. I said what I said. And I'm going to say it one more time. I said what I said. Girl. I said, what are you going to do? I said, I will stomp you. (laughs) It's always, it's not short man syndrome for real. And then what's also just upsetting about it are the people, you know, you can feel how you want to feel about either way, you know, looking yeah. on both sides. But what just pisses me off, at least in my community, is just sort of the, how people were making fun of it. Mm-hmm. Like there was this complete trash of a human being named Drea Michelle. She used to be on Love and Hip, I said Love Hip Hop, I'm sorry. She used to be on Basketball Wives. She's oh. ultimate grippy, you know. <laughs> She a sidewalk groupie. <laughs> that's what I'm calling. <laughs> oh, that's funny. A side, you know you want to laugh. I know, that's I know. I'm okay. trying to <laughs> sidewalk groupie. <laughs> that's what Drea is. That's it, what Drea is. She's a sidewalk groupie. But yeah. <laughs> Her sidewalk groupie ass was on a podcast. And you know, they were interviewing her. Uh-huh. But they asked her, what do you think of the whole Megan the Stallion situation? And she's just so like. I think it's romantic. I think they were in love. I think they had some like I could see the shit going on, you know, something like, yeah. you know, you Bobby and Whitney and he like grabbed her and shot her and everything. Like, I want that kind of love. I want somebody to love me so bad that, you know, they shoot me in the foot. That's sexy. Like she said the Are gist you of something right like that. that. Is so- that ass. You can look it up on YouTube, Yasmin. Yes. Uh, yes as we are on youtube saying this you can look it up on youtube right above us you know in the search section right after you finish watching these videos of course and then don't forget to subscribe at the bottom before you go up and do that search but yeah it's this trash human being 
She lost her endorsement with Fenty Beauty, which I don't even understand why she was signed with them in the first place. But, you know, that's their choice, who they want to pick. You know, it's not my business. It's not like I got a contract, even though. But anyways, I'm falling off the track. It's kind of dumb because thinking about it, Drea, your boss is a domestic violence survivor. How are you going to make a joke about I am happy. violence? Yeah, no, dude, I'm I'm happy that she lost that endorsement. Like, first I guess who signed her immediately. Huh? I guess who signed her immediately to be an ambassador for their brand now? I don't, who? Kylie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, immediately. Yeah. Okay. So, the, I mean, that tells you all you need to know. So, yeah. I mean, I'm just, ha- I'm, I'm happy she lost the endorsement for real, though, because yeah. who, like, who the hell, what sane person would say stuff like that? Like, are you kidding me? That is so f- up. That, that's f- up. And speaking of Rihanna, though, can we talk about the Fenty Beauty, sh- like, fashion show and how lovely oh, it was? Yes. I, I, you know what's funny? I was going to tell you, like, we should do a whole, like, epi- a special episode because I saw that and that was bomb. Like, everything. The clothes the uh performances that she had she had all shapes sizes color like and uh, like i was blown away i was actually happy and it's funny because i missed um the was it 2019 was it last year last year oh, last year's yeah last year's yeah was i missed first. that and so i wanted to watch it never got around to it but i loved everything i saw however i thought she was gonna do her own thing like her, her like a performance or something like that she didn't Mm-mm. i, don't know I think because she, she wants to draw more attention to her brand yeah i, I mean yeah. maybe it's because like i would have loved to see like a little a little something from her so because i do miss her being you know in the spotlight in terms of like singing and yeah i miss her stage presence so i've always wanted to go to her concert never got a chance to i'm so sad she is one person i will actually go see in concert same i'm very proud of what she's doing you know to be one of the you know first few um you know black you know people to have their own empire like house of rihanna like she's got makeup, she's got clothing. Like this is gonna be generational. Somebody and I love her makeup. She could be too. like her, her own vogue. Is really good. Yeah, she could be her own vogue, basically, and that's what we need. And speaking, you know, we could have the Latin vogue. I mean, we do have Latin vogue, but I'm just saying, like, we could yeah. have a woman with her own empire that's similar to that, and own Asian with their own empire that's similar to that. You know, and. Vice it probably person. is. We just don't know about them, actually. Mm-hmm. There probably is. We just don't know. Anybody who wants to tell us, let us know. DM us. Let us know. Tweet at us. So write in the description box if there. There's even like, uh, you know what I've always wanted to try because we're talking about like um, the makeup line a little bit. It's like the Korean skincare. Beauty. Yes, I would love to try that. Right. Somebody told me because I okay. Get glass so for, skin. You know, for 2020, I was supposed to go to um I was supposed to go to South Korea. I was gonna go with um my daughter's godmother, and uh she's one of my closest friends. And so we were supposed to go to South Korea to go visit a friend uh that he used to live there, and then from there we were gonna go to Japan. And then I remember someone advised me, they were like, okay, if you're going to uh, Korea, go with an empty maleta or like- wh- What's what that mean? mean? Maleta, uh, suitcase. <laughs> okay. I always do that. Okay, so a suitcase, suitcase. So you bring your suitcase, you make sure it's empty because apparently um, the fashion, the skincare, you want to bring that back with you. And I was like, okay, I was ready, girl. I had two maletas with me, so <laughs> I was ready. And of course, when you know, 2020 happened and that ruined my plans, but it's all good. So hopefully, you know, when all of this is over, I can go to Korea and, you know, um, try out the skincare. I have a lot of like tourist sites I really want to see. So I get um, Korean, you know, yeah. like some bimbap and kimchi and some bulgogi. <laughs> I could go Actually, for some You know, one of my right friends, you know, one of my friends was telling me the best, well, for him anyways, the best thing to do was to go and like go to these uh, nightclubs and party. Like he goes to these like rave things. You might actually like it. 
And so like, uh, I remember, dude, I remember in his story, um, if he ever hears this, hi, I think you know who you are. But the thing is, he he went to like this uh, club or something like that, and he was like raving so hard that he ended up like, I don't know if he got on a table or something. And like, he just told me uh, he fell and I'm going to the hospital and cause like he got like a, a wound here, but he was like, it was the best night ever. And That's I was just funny. like, uh, I won't go that hard, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> so, yeah, next stop is Ibiza apparently. So I was just like, all right, you do you, man. <laughs> One of the things I think that I should mention is Salty Mermaid Swimwear. Please tell us about it. So as you know, we are going into Halloween. We are going into the month of November. And of course, somebody is going to sit there and say, when do I need a bathing suit? Um, Yes, you do need a bathing suit because last time I checked, not everybody is going to be in the winter during Thanksgiving or Christmas. Some people are actually going to be in Florida where it's summer every day or in a different country where it's African hot, like Africa. So go on Salty Marie Summer and get yourself a bomb ass one. So you can get yourself some charms. You can get yourself a bikini. You can make some match for the girl in your life, the boy in your life or who, for whoever you love, tell them Cat sent you. And as you know, the code is salty, cat, um, salty 15 cat. Once again, the code is salty 15 cat, so you can get 15% off. <laughs> and the best part is that the portion of it goes to charity. Absolutely. Thanks for remembering. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. <laughs> you know what's funny? I say welcome back because this is a video version of us. Like, um, I know in the audio, it's like, yeah, welcome back. But in video, we never left. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're just there. But I did want to share you uh, share something with you. Because earlier, you know, for those who, um, who don't know, but like, we like to take a little shot before uh, we start a show. Kind of just like, I don't know warm up a little bit you know because it's one of those things where we're having like girls chit chat type mm -hmm. thing. we try to and I think that's why sometimes when we talk we talk a lot and so our running time would be like to 50 <laughs> yeah but um I know you saw me take this shot right here or I, I took this glass right here mm -hmm. so um actually a co-worker an ex-co-worker of mine um gave me the shot and That's cool. yeah right and she gave all the girls a shot like a, you know it's funny my relationship with that person was kind of interesting because it was one of those things where it's like you know how like sometimes your manager tries to be your friend mm -hmm. you know what I mean like I'm talking about like your actual friends it's like oh you know we come to work we will like chit chat and all this fun stuff you know and so I always thought that was kind of weird, not in the sense of like, you know, because people in the, in the, you know, your coworkers, you're always going to be friends with your coworkers. But the way she did it was weird to me. And I'm just like, okay, you know, and I remember she gave me a lot of shit because I, I kid you not, during the time, so story time, really quickly, <laughs> I'll try to condense it as much as I can. So when I got this job, I had to be five months pregnant with my first child, Adrena, right? And the funny thing is that I was, at that time, I wasn't getting a lot of jobs because um, I've never worked in my life before. And, you know, mm -hmm. this was like, like I was 19 when I got my first job. Yeah, and so, yeah, 19 and pregnant. Woo. Okay, so the thing is, um, I remember like she at first gave me so much shit because she was like, oh, you didn't tell me that you were pregnant when you applied for this job. And I was like, but it's not on the questionnaire. So, you know what I mean? I legit That's told her that. That's a very good response. Yeah, no, legit. That was my response. And I wasn't trying to be mean about it because the way she like came at me, I was just like, well, it's not, you know, it doesn't say also, uh, what is your medical history or whatever it is? You, you know what I mean? So I didn't think I had to tell her. Eventually, I knew I had to tell her because I was five months pregnant. You know, of course, I'm going to, uh, you know, give birth and then I have to go out. Well, the thing is, um, after I gave birth uh, to my first child, 
they end up uh because they liked me and so they end up moving me to another store and at that store i started training to become like an assistant manager and this was over do you remember that mall if anybody's from maryland do you guys remember that mall uh white flint mall yeah I used, to work down, there. Yeah. Yeah, I used to work there and so um oh god this is taking me back the thing about it is that um I just remembered this girl uh, eventually like she was supposed to be managing like four different stores you know Montgomery Mall Wheaton Mall White Flint Mall and then Columbia Mall yeah Columbia mm -hmm. Mall and because uh, I remember Columbia Malls in Virginia Okay, so I was right. Wait, Columbia Mall is in Columbia, Maryland. Okay, maybe it was in Columbia. It was a mall, oh, somewhere, Tyson's. It was Tyson's Corner. That's what it was, because I remember she kept, mm -hmm. uh, uh, she was so pissed off that she had to drive from, you know, Virginia to Maryland. But the point is, she started doing some weird, like, weird, shady stuff. Like, Eventually, she wanted me to start doing the time, like, what is it, the, the time stamps of people she wanted me to do, and they were doing it old school, kind of, like, I had to write it down versus, like, a little computer telling you. I was like, damn, man, she got me doing <laughs> I was. I mean, I knew it was going to be as because uh, eventually I wanted to become assistant manager, and then I was just like, "What the hell? She got me doing all this stuff!" And I was just like, "This is so weird. This is like stuff that you're supposed to do. I'm just, you know, if you tell me go change the mannequins, I'm gonna go change the mannequins. I'm gonna clean up the store. I'm gonna open and close and all that fun stuff." And so all of a sudden, like, she started like putting more work on me, and I'm just like what the hell right that's what i said and i was just like this is so bizarre and then next thing you know i got to the point where our boss came over to the store one day and he was like oh i noticed that uh your boss isn't there and i was just like i know me too <laughs> like she was supposed to do because you know she was running the store and she was supposed to come for the morning shift with me i guess to like set up for like I don't know if it was Christmas or something. It was a, for a holiday, like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Next thing you know, all I remember is that um, he started asking questions. And then our store started becoming a little more high profile on our boss. And I was just like, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Because what was happening is that we started having some clothes missing, allegedly. Right? And I was just like, there's no way like literally this guy he he had cameras everywhere 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 so i wouldn't even know how you would even like try to steal these clothes and by the way these these clothes were like really cheap like they were cheaply done but the the point is she like stuff started happening that the boss i'm not going to go into details but like the boss started questioning me and i was like oh no 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 I've been here for you. And I was telling him that I was like, I love you guys. You know, they were so cute and sweet. And like, I was just like, I had a really good relationship with his wife. And so I was just like, don't be putting fingers on me. If anything, we have somebody not showing up to work lately. And it turned out when I'm not there and she's there, she started like, I don't know how the hell she does it, but I think it's because our store at White Flame Mall is the store where all the clothes get brought in, right? Because I made a friend there. Oh, bless her heart. I hope, like, I hope she's doing good wherever she is. And this is the first time I've ever met someone who's a Mongolian. Like she was legit from there. And so I guess, you know, we were practicing talking in English. Well, the point is she would do the what do you call it she would um the security thing on the clothes but yeah i know what you're talking about yeah so she would put the sensor on them and she would put the tag and when it's not busy i would usually help her out and i'm like okay cool let's get this done so next you know it's because like the way she i think how she was stealing is because all the clothes came from wherever it came from to our main store and then it gets shipped out to these other malls right because she was sometimes in charge to take the clothes to the damn mall and I, I... right i said oh my god dios mio que escándalo like <laughs> I was like, what is this? Anyways, long story short, every time I see this shot glass, 
and I'll post it up on uh, on our Instagram for you guys to see. Every time I see the shot glass, it always reminds me of that wild story. Like, homegirl almost got me fired because, you know, she almost got caught. And I was That's like, funny. I, that. I, I have good relationship with the Mongolian girl. I have good relationship with my boss and his wife. Hell no. And I really loved working at that store. Like, I've always... I'm not gonna lie like low-key I've always wanted to run my own boutique and stuff like that I swear a little Selena yeah I swear to you since I was five like you know like I always feel like Selena's essence is in me in the sense of you know when she brought up that idea oh she wants to have like a farm in her backyard like a chicken a cow horses I've always wanted that and then uh when she started talking about boutiques and stuff I was like oh that sounds so cute. You know what I mean? I was just like, mm-hmm. I hope one day I'll be blessed to have like a cute little boutique or a, especially a farm an- animal, you know, in my house. I want to have like one of those big mansions where like if my friends come over, over in the West Wing, you're going to see my horses, chicken. <laughs> That's funny. Right? And then inside the house, you're just going to see uh, chickens clocking. <laughs> and they'll be like, is that a chicken? So, yes, it is. <laughs> so now my guess it's time for the cheese my corner. <laughs> so what's going on? Uh, well, I was thinking, okay, let's be honest here. I did really want to talk about this because you know how like in uh, the last episode when we had Avi, Avi, thank you so much for coming. Like I had so much fun with you, you know, uh, educating us about witches. But do you remember how in that story I was telling you about how um, how the guy left a agency to create change in Hollywood? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess we're taking a step back because Gal Gadot. Uh, <sighs> you know she's, she's doing, doing a movie playing an Egyptian woman, even though she's Jewish and from Israel. And, you know, it, at first I I was like. Yeah, why not? Because she, it, in terms of the look, she does fit it in terms of the picture. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to be honest with you. I didn't know she was Jewish. I I honestly didn't know. Because I'm one of those people where like, okay, you get into uh, in, like a singer, a writer, a director. Like sometimes you like just their craft and that's it. Like you won't go as far as like trying to, um, what do you call it? Like go and search their biopic or like whatever it is and figure out who they are. What is their sun and rising moon? And you know, like when is their birthday? It's like who they dating and all this stuff. I'm not, I'm not usually like that unless it's these uh, seven beautiful boys behind me, right? Or like yeah. uh, Shakira or like um, Lady Gaga that, you know, them like, I'll definitely like look up where when's their birthday. But I understand where people are getting upset because I only know the skim of the history you know and uh a a lot of um you know i didn't know this but there was a lot of debate whether cleopatra was even like what 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 cleopatra is actually greek there's a lot of you know people that believe that cleopatra is you know brown but she's actually not she actually was greek and i actually learned that in history class but it is something that has been mistaken a lot yeah. And yeah, because you know, Cleopatra was the last queen of Egypt, and the original, you know, Egyptians were you know brown skin. Mm-hmm. But you know, eventually, you know, with the touch of colonization, and then you know, creating alliances and marrying into families and such. I mean, you know, it created the you know mine that was Cleopatra's you know right. descendants which ended up Greek because if you see most, you know, Egyptians nowadays, they are lighter skinned, most of them, not all of them, you know, Mm. just putting it out there. So the reason why, you know, a lot of people get upset, you know, people want to come for Elizabeth Taylor. I hate to say it, but they actually got it right this one time. Right. But I think one of the biggest stereotypes to why we get mad about it is because, you know, racist people have whitewashed bullshit for a long long I mean, time it's, it's been the history of hollywood anyways you know yeah whitewashed. so i don't blame people for thinking cleopatra you know was because of history but you know this cleopatra she well historical cleopatra she was greek 
yeah. She was Greek of Egyptian. I mean, she was Egyptian of Greek descent. So. Right. So I guess yeah. the question now is like, a lot of people are just wondering, like, will she keep the role? Because, you know, there are times where like the amount of backlash there is, like that's when uh, actors would step down and we'll even have more respect for actors who step down the role because out of respect, maybe we should give justice to uh, the story of Cleopatra. So I don't know how I feel about this whole situation. Like, you know, because like I said in the beginning for me, like, and like I get why they why they casted her, and it's because she looks the part. However, oh, that's you know, that's if funny. We are, yeah, because if we are gonna try and portray history the way history should, then you might as well cast someone that's exactly how it is. Because mm -hmm. you know, like we said last time, you know, I think it's time that you know we start making these changes, and making these changes requires actually casting the correct actor for said role. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we'll see. Oh, and also she uh, finally apologized about what she did seven months ago. Oh yeah, <laughs> that complete so crap. Imagine yeah, all so the sad. people BS. You know what's interesting? My mom had asked me about that back then. I she did like, too. Remember, I was like, why you that? <laughs> like, I don't get it. She was like, what's the problem? And I told my mom, I was like, mom, I said, we just are in lockdown. I said, it hasn't even been a fortnight. It has not been two weeks. Right. We're on day 11, I believe, of being on lockdown for the first time. Uh, some people have lost their jobs right now. Right. Some people don't know how they're going to pay their rent. Gal Gadot being a freaking like millionaire sitting in a rich ass house going imagine all the people it's not gonna help nobody mom it's not <laughs> it's insulting. i mean you're not wrong you're not wrong. it's insulting yeah. in a way like she meant well yeah she did mean well i get it but we don't need that are you kidding me right now can you imagine you losing your house losing everything and i come to you guys and i go it's okay Imagine all the people living life in peace. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Let's sing and hold hands. You see, your stinger already wants to come out, Yasmin. You're just I mean, being okay. polite. You know, it's funny. When it first came out, I didn't have an issue. I and did. It wasn't until you and I started talking about it, and I was like, okay, I think you're probably right. Because it's one of those things where she just meant... You know, we, we established that. She meant no harm by it. You know what I mean? It's like, read the room. She did not read the room. It's like, who's man? But in this, like, who's girl? Like, get her ass out of here. Like, no. Can you imagine? You lose everything. And Gal Gadot comes out. Imagine all the people. It's okay, everyone. Living life in peace. Let's sing John Lennon. I find, you know, it's funny because what I find bizarre about the whole situation is that she apologizes seven months later and it's in an issue of Vanity Right. Fair. When we don't like, forget again, once again, not reading the room. That's her problem. She, she should have read apologized the room. like immediately. Like maybe like, okay, a month, you know, a month had already passed. Look, I understand. I'm, I apologize, you know, because we talked about this offline where we were like um you know a lot of these celebrities uh some of them are already born in wealth right and then others you know they went from being poor to uh being rich for the mm -hmm. roles that they play or you know songs that they put out and the thing is i feel like sometimes they forget what that felt like you know because you can always have the memory of where you were because it's kind of like a reflection, right? True. Sure. But then when you take it back and you're like, um, okay, when a situation like this happens, you're living comfortably. Yeah. You're going to send out the message a little bit differently, you know, or maybe something a little more intimate with uh, fans, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a Kumbaya song. So, I don't know. So, but... Uh, yeah. That's all. That's all the news I had. <laughs> We're going to our, you know, next segment, which is called "Damn, bruh, That's wild. 
where I find a crazy story from around the world. And this one, once again, is from mirror.co.uk. And I'm about to pull up the title, so we're going to change this for a second. This story is basically called Woman Mortified After Labrador Finds Sex Toy During Walk and Won't Let It Go. So, yeah. Wait, 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 what? It's called Woman Mortified After Labrador Finds Sex Toy During Walk and Won't Let It Go. Ew. Yep. So there's a woman named Clara Robson, and I believe she is from England. Doesn't say her exact city, but she's from England. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) there she is, minding her own business with her, you know, Labrador retriever, her going to lab, and she's just, you know, walking. And, you know, the dog's playing, and she doesn't have leash on this dog, of of course. So the dog runs into the woods, and it has something in its mouth. And she's like, you know, watching and everything. And, you know, she's chilling. And then she's just thinking, you know, it's like, a, you know, a really wide stick. And then she's like, wait, come here. Come here, little doggy. What, what you got over there in your mouth? Turned the out the dog. Had it in its mouth? Yeah, the dog had a purple Ooh. dildo in its mouth. Oh, yes. No. And for those who do not know what a dildo is, people, yes, a dildo is a sex toy it. that is you used for on. pleasure for women. Actually, yes. no, for people, for people. I'm so sorry for that ignorance that I just displayed. But yes, that was in his mouth. God knows where that dildo came from, but it was somewhere in the woods and the dog sniffed it out and found it. So naturally, as a, you know, owner, she was mortified. Of course. So, yeah, so she basically was like, down dog, take it out of your mouth. But the dog was not trying to take it out of its mouth. It was really enjoying playing with it. Like, it was legit playing with this dildo. Like it was, you know, a stick that it had found on the ground. So she was basically saying that for a very good, awkward 10 minutes, she had a very, you know, awkward time trying to get the dildo out of the dog's mouth. Of course, But she did take a picture of the moment and post it on her Twitter, and it got, like, thousands of likes and, you know, thousands of... that on Twitter? Yeah, because, you know, it's a story that, you know, how many people would believe something like that if I told you that, yes? Actually, true. Did I ever tell you that my dog, Grover, he, like, pooped, uh, like, uh, like, in the handstand? Oh, goodness. Yes. (laughs) That's a thing? (laughs) What the... I took a picture so of it. It's on my Instagram. It's on my Instagram. My dog gives you the handstand. Actually, wow. I'll post. <laughs> wow. I'll probably post if people want to see what 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 it looks like. I'll post it up on Instagram or Twitter. Yeah, but she did end up taking you know it off. She did do it. She did end up to, you know getting the dildo out of the dog's mouth. She mm-hmm. discarded it and everything. And she has a funny story to tell people. And that's the end of the segment. Yeah. Damn, dude, that's a while. Yeah. <laughs> However, I think it might be a little bit believable because, like I told you, my dog does a handstand when it poops. When he yeah, poops. I'm just like, bruh, really? Like, what you doing? I remember I took a picture of it. You know what? You're probably right because um, when I told my friends, like, yo, my dog like handstands when he actually um, poops, and people were like. Nah, are you serious? I've never seen that. I've never <laughs> the seen that. denial, nah. Yeah, and then one day I was walking, I was like, click. And I was just like, see? See, what did I tell you? <laughs> <sighs> That's funny. But that was nice. All right. Well, guys, let us know if your dog does something crazy when it, True. like, right? On, a, on your just normal day walk, does your dog pick up dildos or, like... I don't have a dog, but my cat robs me at night. If I don't hide my stuff, my cat, I, my stuff goes missing. She's legit a cat burglar. Are like, you serious? Really she actually robs you? She's around you. Are you serious? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> like, karma! I know. Right. Karma! <laughs> True, when she gets me. <laughs> karma! And I'm just like, damn, girl. <laughs> Right, that's that black parent saying where it's like, Karma, don't make me. You see? And she looked at me too when I said it. Because she's you, like, you right know what now. This she's reminded like, me of? There was a TikTok. Oh. Yeah. As you can see, she's a You know what she's just remind me of? Um, 
did I ever send you that video where um there like people were sharing this so uh, sound bite where they like yelled at their cat and they were like, for example, it would be like, Karma, get off the counter. That's the <laughs> Caucasian. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? It was like something. Yeah, like, that's that's something. Caucasian. That was funny. Caucasian. I agree. We that, all do that's that. Me. <laughs> that's me. Damn right. She knows better. She knows better. <laughs> we ain't playing that shit. All right, Get your guys, ass out of that kitchen. No. <laughs> All right, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. We kind of went on a um, random journey here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can know what's going on. <laughs> Our artist of the week is O-Dog with the song Do That. I am so proud of you. Can't wait to play your song. You about to kill it. You about to go hard. <laughs> Yep. All right. Bye. Until next time. Bye. Yeah. Oh, dog. No. Ah. And the circle. Run up a check. Run it up, run it up. He can get set. Walk some big steps. Step back. Hit the box, you're set. My foot on the neck. Y'all bitch upset. Come for me. Don't come for me. Better come for me. Fix